Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Engineering Roundtable. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about creating USB HID devices, uh, in this case a keyboard, uh, using the Arduino Uno. With the release of the Uno, uh, Arduino included the Atmega 8U2 chip to replace the FTDI, and this allows us to create uh, USB devices and reprogram the chip that actually communicates with the computer. So today we're going to go over USB kind of on a high level, uh, how it works, how its HID is related to the USB spec overall, and then I'm going to show you how to make your own USB device uh, so that you can create your own custom keyboard implementations at home. A little bit of background on USB. In 1994, seven companies got together and decided that they were going to create a single serial protocol for connecting peripherals to personal computers. They wanted to make this as general as possible. They wanted you to be able to connect any device and devices that needed power over USB and uh, be able to create this universal uh, serial bus. Uh, that's why your phone, your camera, your Arduino all are able to run over USB is because they sat down and created this very versatile uh, protocol. The problem with that is it's so versatile it's really hard to develop with, or it can be hard to develop with because it can do so much um, and there's a lot of information on it. Within the USB specification, there are 20 different device classes. There is a printer device class, there's a wireless device class, there's an audio device class, and there is a human interface device, uh, HID class. Underneath the HID class, are the specifications for any human interface device uh, that the HID class writers decided to write in. The common ones being a keyboard and a mouse. And they're so common, in fact, that they're plug and play. Your operating system can detect when you've plugged in a keyboard and you can start using it without having to, just to install any driver software. Underneath the HID spec, though, there are a lot more uh, interface devices that they've laid out and written the specification for. But then there's some strange ones. The spaceship class, the submarine class, the golf club class with specific values for each of the different clubs in the bag. They actually spent time writing the device specification for a magic carpet a human interface device, which I guess is just, they've laid out, is a bar that you hold that you can push back and forth or turn to fly your magic carpet. Each of these devices has a specification that tells the designer what kind of report the device should be sending, what it is, where it wants its information to go, and what I exactly its in information is. So in the case of a keyboard, you send key presses. In the case of a mouse, you'd send X and Y coordinates. And this class definition is what designers use to create things like keyboard and mice and joysticks. As I said before, when you plug in a keyboard or a keyboard HID device, the operating system knows automatically to pull down uh, the driver for it and install it so you can start using it right away. Each device has its own specific report that it's going to send out. It sends what it is, what kind of endpoint it should be, uh, if it has subclass information. The important bits that the keyboard sends are any key presses that it's making and the status of its LEDs. Anytime something changes on the keyboard, it sends this report that contains this information. Um, and because this report was set out in the spec, the computer knows what to do with it. What the computer is expecting is an eight byte set of data. So this is byte zero, this is byte seven. That contains key information. Somewhere in the report, there is going to be this eight byte chunk, which has all of the key presses and the modifiers. So this top bit is the modifier bit. The second bit is reserved, and these bits following up to seven are all key bits. When something changes, for example, you press an A on the keyboard, byte two here is sent as an A, and the computer knows that an A has been pressed. When the byte goes back to zero, which all of these bytes by default should be zero, it knows that the A has been released. When you send a character, when one of these changes, it just doesn't change to an ASCII code. It changes to a HID value that was set out by the people who wrote the HID spec. When you press an A on the keyboard, it sends a certain value. When you press a capital A, it's sending the same key value 
but it, this time it's sending that the, the shift was pressed. And there's also a lot of keys that don't have ASCII values for them. Things like escape and enter and F1, F2, F3. Uh, those keys don't have any kind of ASCII uh, code for them. So the HID spec had to lay out more or different values. So when you send an A, it is uh, ASCII value 97, but in HID, it's four. When you send a capital A, it is ASCII value 65, but the HID value is still four. These values are the same for the lowercase and the capital. To specify whether, we, whether or not we want a, an A or a capital A, we have to use the modifier byte. The modifier keys are Control, Shift, Alt, and the GUI key, the Windows key or Apple key if you want. The modifier byte is broken down into the eight bits that all represent different modifier keys. So bit zero, for example, if it's set to one, it represents that the control modifier is being held down. The first bit represents the left control modifier. The, that would be fifth bit, represents the right control modifier. This modifier byte is sent along with this HID report. So if byte two is an A or a four, the modifier bit goes in that first byte, it's sent along with the report of A and the, uh, if, if shift is pressed, that's how the computer knows you want a capital A and not a lowercase a. That's the basics of what the keyboard report is gonna look like. The report itself is actually much longer. What we wanna be able to change is this. In order to do this with the Arduino, or with the Uno in particular, we need to make the, the Uno look to the computer like a keyboard. Before the Uno was released, the Arduino was the Atmega 328, which is the actual Arduino chip running the Arduino bootloader. Then there was an FTDI, which did all the serial com communication with a computer, but the firmware was such that it was only built to do serial communication. There's a driver sitting on the computer that would talk back and forth with this FTDI when you open the terminal. It knew that it was talking to a serial device and it would send the FTDI's USB report uh, using its own driver. With the release of the Uno, this FTDI has been replaced by an Atmega 8U2, which makes it reprogrammable, which means we can use any driver we want here on the computer to make this device look like anything we want. When you're using an Uno normally, you've got the Uno device driver software running on your computer, talking to the 8U2. The 8U2 is doing the communication to the 328. This is how you program and reprogram your sketches using Arduino. What we want to be able to do is not have to install anything here and make this 8U2 say, I'm a keyboard, and have the computer automatically install that software and start running its, its keyboard uh, functions for the HID class. We're going to need to reprogram this 8U2 with this keyboard firmware. However, that will not allow the Uno to operate like an Uno anymore. You can't reprogram this 328 when this 8U2 looks like a keyboard. So in order to do this, we need to program the Uno with the firmware that will send our commands to the 8U2 running the keyboard firmware, then reprogram the 8U2 with its keyboard firmware so that the computer thinks it's a keyboard. Once it's running, the 328 will operate normally, like your Arduino, you're used to your Arduino working, but the 8U2 will be receiving serial commands that then it will then will turn into an HID report for the computer. To do this, we're going to need the 8U2 serial firmware, which we normally use to program the Arduino. We are going to need some keyboard firmware that can go on this 8U2 once we've programmed the 328. And we're going to need a way to reprogram this 8U2 uh, which most people haven't done. They, most people use just the Arduino software. Writing the driver software for uh, a HID device or an HID driver is very difficult. Uh, like I said earlier, it's a very versatile protocol and very complex and there's a lot of information. Instead of writing my own, uh, after some Googling, I found uh, some HID firmware for a keyboard for the 8U2. Uh, written by someone named Darren. Thanks, Darren. I can reprogram the Atmega 8U2 using a tool that Atmel puts out for free called the Atmel Flip Programmer. And all of these things are linked to, or should be linked to, 
uh, below this video, uh, including a link to another great tutorial on changing the 8U2 and using the keyboard firmware. It treats the 328, or it communicates with the 328 serially, and it looks like a keyboard to the computer. But what it looks for is that 8-byte report that I was explaining earlier. You build that 8-byte report on the Arduino, you send it to the 8U2, the 8U2 takes that, puts it into a keyboard report, and sends it to the computer. All I have to do is program in the HID code for A to be printed by the 328, put it into that 8-byte format, the 8U2, send it to the 8U2, the 8U2 will package it, send it, and your computer will type an A. Here's the example I've put together. On this box, I've got a single switch. This is just a power switch connected to the power line of my USB cable so I can turn the device on and off. I've got a button which is connected to the reset lines of the Atmega 8U2. And this pedal is just connected to digital two and ground. So this is just a basic switch, plugs into my box, and inside is just an Uno. This can be programmed to operate like a keyboard. It's only a one button keyboard, but when I plug it into my computer, it comes up as a keyboard. To program this device, I start out with an Uno with the serial firmware on the Atmega 8U2. Plug it in, load my sketch, then I have to do something kind of tricky. I have to reset the lines on the Atmega 8U2. That's what this button's for. The reset lines are tied to this programming header. So if you have a bare Arduino, you can just short a wire across these two pins and it will short reset on the uh, or 8U2. The chip should come up in its programming mode. Because it is a USB enabled chip, you can program it over USB using the Atmel flip programmer. Once I reset the entire board, it will come up looking like a keyboard. The Arduino will then run my firmware, send uh, HID codes to the 8U2, and the 8U2 will package that, send it as a keyboard key command, which will press this key on the screen. What I need to do is make sure it has the serial firmware on it. The hex files for the serial firmware and the keyboard firmware are linked below. But we need, need to make sure that the 8U2 has the Arduino serial uh, firmware to load the Arduino code. So what I'm going to do is go to my Atmel Flip programmer, Make sure my device is set to AT90 USB 8.2. Reset the 8U2 by pressing this button, which will cause it to come up as a USB device. I'm going to open the port connection. I'm going to choose the hex file. In this case, it is the USB serial uno.hex and program it. I'm going to reset this. And this time, it's going to come up as an Uno. So I can go into Arduino, it's come up as COM8, make sure it's an Uno, and I can program it. What I'm programming this with is some code that will send HID characters to the 8U2 to be sent as a keyboard report. Once this is programmed, I can go back to the flip programmer, reset the device again, which puts the Atmega 8U2 in programming mode, and choose this time the Arduino keyboard firmware open the USB connection, and flash it with the keyboard firmware. This time, when I reset the entire device, it will come up as a keyboard. So if I go into my device manager, I've got my standard keyboard and HID keyboard device. So when I hit the pedal, it runs all my keyboard commands. In this case, opening a video. So now, whenever I feel the need to listen to Cannibal Corpse, I can just hit this pedal, which I keep under my desk, and it pops right up. The Arduino firmware itself uses a library that I wrote to translate ASCII characters into HID characters. I wrote a big lookout, uh, lookup table that took me forever, um, and I was able to overload the uh, print line and print functions to actually uh, type in a string and then translate it into HID characters, which will be sent as HID commands by the 8U2. Uh, it's called HID keyboard.h and it's on GitHub and the link along with the others should be below this video. I've also got functions to press individual keys on the keyboard, keys that don't, I can't type in as a string and need special commands. So in this case, 
it's the GUI key for this example. That's the key that in Windows opens and closes the start menu. So this code opens the start menu, releases the GUI key, delays for 200 milliseconds, and then it types run. And in this case, it's a print line, so there's a carriage return after it. Hits the GUI key, types run, opens up a run menu, and then types in a URL. And with the delays in between, it knows to wait long enough so that the opening the browser uh, can catch up before it knows to type even more commands. If I want to edit my file, I have to do the same thing over again. I have to go into flip, load the USB serial, reset the device, and so on and so forth. Because once that keyboard firmware is on the 8U2, it cannot be programmed like a normal Arduino. You have to put the serial firmware back on the chip. Why is this cool? I've had it open up browsers. Uh, if I want to develop, I can have it pop up two terminal windows. One of the uses I like the most is to use it for games. If I have to press a button like F1, uh, I can just have this at my feet. Um, so when I'm in the middle of a game and I need to press F1, I can just hit the pedal instead of having to look at the keyboard. And there are lots of mischievous things you could do with it as well. You could attach it to your coworker's computer and have it send a random key press every 30 seconds. You could uh, have it shut down their computer uh, randomly, have it delete files. You could do uh, lots of different fun and potentially harmful things uh, with this device. Now, I don't recommend that or encourage that, but these uh, having your own keyboard that you can reprogram and automate uh, is a lot of fun. Take a look at the keyboard firmware, the HID keyboard firmware that we put on the 8U2. It's open source and it's very well commented. It's a good exercise in uh, system pro level programming. It's a great way to get started uh, making your own HID devices and it allows you to uh, create other devices other than a keyboard. You could hack it to be a mouse or a tank simulator or a magic carpet. So that's it for this episode of Engineering Roundtable. I hope that inspired you to uh, create your own HID device uh, and check in uh, in two weeks for another episode of Engineering Roundtable.